This is Dr. Zhaofeng Wang, a tenured professor at Indiana University Bloomington who's published hundreds of papers on computer science, cybersecurity, and privacy. But a few days ago, Dr. Wang disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The university wiped his profile page, the FBI raided his home, and it's like his 21-year career never existed. It's weird because much of his recent work is centered around machine learning security, like the detection of backdoored large language models. Nobody knows where he is or what he did to get on the Fed's naughty list, but it's yet another example of how how dangerous programmers can be when we're actually employed. In today's video, we'll try to untangle the mystery of Dr. Wang, but also look at a few other crazy programmers who recently sabotaged computer systems from the inside out. It is April 2nd, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. A few years ago, if you drove a Tesla down the street, people would give you a thumbs up for virtue signaling that you care about global warming. But nowadays, these same people will give you a different finger right before they throw a Molotov cocktail at your car. But what does that have to do with Dr. Wang? Well, one of the leading theories is that he was disappeared by the government Pol Pot style, and Elon is personally waterboarding him at Gitmo as we speak. And that's a reasonable conclusion if he is an actual Chinese spy that threatens national security. But Reddit is not always a great place to find the truth. A few weeks ago, somebody filed misconduct allegations against Wang, where he was accused of mislabeling the principal investigator for a grant and failing to disclose co-authors. That doesn't explain the FBI raid, but what appears more likely is that he disappeared on his own because he knew he was doing very bad things and the hammer was coming down. especially after being locked out of his work computer. In addition, it has now been confirmed by someone in China that he's alive and safe, and wasn't disappeared by the government. The truth is that nobody knows where he is or what he did, but it's a good reminder that skilled programmers are extremely dangerous. Like just a few weeks ago, a software developer from Texas named Davis Liu was convicted of criminal sabotage, and now faces 10 years in prison. What he did was pretty hilarious though. After corporate realignment, he realized that he was probably going to get fired, so he prepared for that day by programming a kill switch in Java. When his name was no longer in the Active Directory, it would automatically create infinite loops to crash servers, delete coworker profiles, and lock out other users from the system, which made it far more difficult to kill the kill switch. When he was fired on September 9th, 2019, the kill switch was activated, and his employer lost hundreds of thousands of dollars as a result. But a kill switch is very similar to a logic bomb, like the ones implemented by David Tinsley at Siemens. This guy had an idea for an infinite money glitch, because he wrote some code that would trigger every couple months to overload their automated spreadsheet software. And when that happened, Siemens would have to pay David to fix it. But David made the mistake of going on vacation, and when the logic bomb was triggered, they had someone else fix it and realized that it wasn't a bug at all, but rather an act of sabotage that got him six months in prison and a $7,500 fine. The scary thing is that any programmer could easily implement something like this, like the code here that will automatically delete all the files on my employer's server on my birthday. But sometimes, a programmer can be a menace to society without having to write any code. Like in 2013, Terry Child set up the fiber optic network work for the city of San Francisco. At the time, there were rumors of tech layoffs coming, and when the city asked Childs for the passwords, he just said no, which basically shut down the city government for 12 days. They threw him in jail, and he still refused, until eventually he succumbed to the power of Mayor Gavin Newsom's haircut. He finally gave up the passwords, but was given four years in prison. The bottom line is that programmers are dangerous. Trust no one, not even a highly respected expert like Dr. Wang. The best way to protect yourself, though, is to become an expert in cybersecurity with Try Hack Me, the sponsor of today's video. It's the world's largest cybersecurity training platform where you build technical skills by completing real-world hacking challenges. Like in this lesson, you use a virtual machine that you control in your browser to hack into a bank. I'm not exactly sure how this is legal, but over 4 million developers have taken their courses, and it's used by a bunch of big tech companies and government agencies. You can start at any skill level, then quickly earn points as you progress through their gamified lessons. Just remember to use your powers for good. There's going to be a lot of really bad vibe-coded applications out there in the near future, and with TryHack, me, you can learn how to exploit them to make the world a better place. Start becoming a cybersecurity expert for free right now using the link below to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.